Watch time is over. What's that? In case, man. <laughs> I see you've plied knifey spoony before. <laughs> What's up everyone, it's Adam from FWCI, Bruce Jew top three worst Christmas presents. This should be interesting. Um, I, don't, <clears throat> I don't think much about like Christmas presents that were the worst, but I love asking people what was the one Christmas present or gift or toy or whatever it was as a kid that you always wanted and you never got. And is that something you went and got as an adult? For me, it was the turtle van. The, the van that had the Ninja Turtles. I had all four of the turtles, which was pretty rare for me. I kind of usually ended up getting like odds and ends of like action figure collections. I had had a bit of a mishmash, but having all four of the turtles was great. And I always wanted that van. I had a mate who had that and he had the blimp as well. God damn it. But that was my white whale in terms of uh, Christmas presents that I always wanted. But the worst Christmas present, I don't know. I reckon it was probably like, I was in my early teens and um, my dad got me a model airplane to paint and build. And I, I, man, I didn't have the greatest relationship with him at the time. And I didn't like airplanes. I just didn't like them. I liked cars. I would have painted a model car. I would have painted like a model, you know, something interesting. But it was just this like boring ass old like World War II airplane that he was way more interested in than I ever was. And that was the uh, present that I was given for Christmas that year, and I remember being real salty about that. Oh, there's also the time my uncle didn't give me anything for Christmas to prove a point because I didn't get my dad a birthday present until like a week after his birthday. By the way, I was 14 years old. I worked at KFC like 15 hours a week. Like, I, I think I did pretty good, all things considering. And my uncle, being the asshole that he was, decided, oh yeah, well, I'll just prove this little kid a lesson then and exclude him from Christmas. So. Thanks, man. But after that little glimpse into my past, let's check out a glimpse into Bruce Chew's past with the top three worst Christmas presents. All right, now that uh, Christmas is over, I figured I'd go over the top three crap hole gifts that I've gotten as a kid. Now, I know Christmas is supposed to be about family and friends and giving and the spirit of Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But when you're a kid, it's not about that. It's about getting sweet presents like the, uh, the Sony PlayStation that I got in 1998. Holy hell, what a time to be alive. I didn't even have a game to play on it. I just had the demo CD that it came with, and I wore that goddamn thing out, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I remember those demo CDs. Actually, not the CDs. Um, I never had a PlayStation 1, or, and I didn't have a 2 until like years and years after the, after the fact. But I remember getting the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Super International Cricket Kit. In fact, I still have that box and that whole console somewhere in the house. And the way my parents did it is they're like, here's two presents that are for both of you. One of them was a big massive box that very much looked like a console. And then one was a smaller box. And they're like, you have to open the smaller box first. So we were like, Ugh. so we opened up the smaller box, me and my brother, and uh, it was a second controller. And we were like, oh my God, we opened up the Super NES and uh, played Super International Cricket a lot. Mortal Kombat 3 it was a great console. I knew the first level of Crash Bandicoot better than the streets of my own neighborhood, but not all the presents that you got for Christmas were home runs. So here's my top three worst Christmas presents. Ready? Here we go. Number three. Now this one's a little vague, but uh, it's an easy one to start off with. Clothes. Any clothes whatsoever. You don't want clothes for Christmas. You want something sweet like a Bop It Extreme. That's what I want. Bop it. Pull it. Fornicate with it. Whatever you do. <laughs> Is that what you do with a puppet? I wasn't aware of that. Yeah, I don't like getting like clothes, like t-shirts and stuff, but I do remember getting some like basketball jerseys growing up and I was always pretty happy to get those. So, you know, if it was something basketball related, then I was usually pretty happy with it. The 1990s. How many matching sweatsuits do I really need? Jesus <laughs> Christ. Your grandma's over there giving you clothes from the 1920s. Oh, sweet grandma. Thanks for the suspenders and tap dancing shoes. My favorite. Your drunk uncle's over there giving you a present that's not even wrapped up. It's like still in a Kmart bag. <laughs> oh, that's great, Uncle Rick. A t-shirt with uh, Steve Urkel on it. That's cool. I'm trying to find the picture of me as a kid wearing a Steve Urkel t-shirt because it's friggin' hilarious, but 
Urkel t-shirts all round. <laughs> I'm sure that'll get me laid. Tell you what, I'll be sure to uh, wear it at your funeral when your lonely ass decides to drink yourself to death. How do you like that? God damn it. No one... Whoa, man. Whoa, slow down on the unk there. I wonder why your kids never call you on the holidays. Number two. All right, let me take... Okay, I just realized, clearly I'm not the only one with a um, shithead uncle. <laughs> Bruce, too, I'm hearing you, man. I'm hearing you. Get time out here and just say what a great movie the movie Jumanji was. God damn, what a national treasure. No, I'm not talking about that stupid-ass remake with Dwayne the Scorpion King Johnson. Not that piece of crap. I love the new Jumanjis. I thought they were good, both of them. I was totally on board with both of those movies. They were great. Talking about the 90s. Monkeys and bats. OG Jumanji is pretty good though as well. Very good. Better than the new ones, I will say. But the new ones weren't bad. Coming out of a board game. Goddamn lion playing piano and shit. That's what I'm talking about. So imagine six-year-old me watching a commercial and finding out that you can buy the board game from the actual movie. Oh, hell yeah. I want monkeys in my kitchen. I want Robin Williams. What are you doing, ass, man? What are you talking about? Christmas 1996. I got the Jumanji board game. And here's actual footage of me that Christmas morning. Jesus, I was a weird looking kid. I got like four <laughs> teeth in my head. Look at me. I'm all pumped up like a stampede of rhinos are about to come bursting through the wall at any minute. <laughs> when you actually get to sit down and play this piece of crap, there's no stampede, no giant yellow plant coming out of the fire. Really? You're surprised that a whole flock of stampeding animal dudes didn't come out of a board game? Come on, man. Measure those expectations. Play's trying to eat your sister. No, you get to draw cards and you roll some dice. Whoopity do. They made the world's most exciting board game into a giant cardboard turd. And a couple days later, I look like the world's biggest asshole because I'm the one that invited all my friends over to my house. I'm promising giant mosquitoes and David Allen Greer. And we didn't get any of that shit. We just sat there <laughs> bored out of our mind. So, uh, when's one of us get sucked up into the jungle? Uh, I don't know. Let me read the instructions. Idiot kids, but let me know in the comments if you had that game as a kid. Was it disappointing? Was it as disappointing as uh, old mate reckons it is, or or no? It's again. Well, thanks a lot, Jumanji board game. No wonder why people threw you off of bridges. Number one. All right. Something fell down off of my shelf. I don't know what that was. Um. Wait, threw Jumanji off of bridges? What's going on there? Is that a reference to another video? Right, so this one is a little embarrassing, but I'm gonna preface- Oh, they do it in the game, right. In the movie. The Got it. Okay, and when you're five years old, you got mashed potatoes for brains, and you can't be held accountable for stuff. It's not fair. So that being said, when I was about five years old, for whatever reason, I really enjoyed the song, All I Wanna Do Is Have Some Fun, by Sheryl Crow. That was my jam when I- <laughs> All I want to do is have some fun before I die. <laughs> it's a banger. It is a banger. I will say that. But, all right. You know what, though? In terms of, like, that kind of thing, <laughs> this is even funnier, I think. Um, when I was a kid, I had a massive crush on Ellen DeGeneres. So, apparently I was barking up the wrong tree on that one. But I was, like, into her. Like, real bad. I was fun. She was... Anyway. Five? I don't know why. I would sing it in the back seat of the car when my mom was driving. All I wanna do is have some fun. Do, 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 do. I don't know these words. So when Christmas came around that year, my mom thought it would be a great idea to give me, a five year old boy, a Sheryl Crow cassette tape. <laughs> yeah, it was a cassette tape. It was 1995, so see. I remember seeing that on shelves. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> CDs were like $4,000 at the time. So I opened it up, and I gotta say, I felt a little betrayed. What the hell, Mom? This was between me, you, and the Oldsmobile. Look at Dad's face right now. Look how disappointed he is. <laughs> Never mind the Nerf football, Dad. Your son's got himself a Sheryl Crow cassette tape. How does that make you feel? Well, who was I kidding? I still gotta listen to it upstairs by myself in my room. Nobody can hold me back from that sweet... Sweet, sweet Cheryl Crow cassette tape. Are you kidding me? My friends would come over. Uh, why do you have a Cheryl Crow cassette in here? Uh, that's, uh, that's my sister's. That's what that is. Um, what about the poster on the wall? God damn it, Michael. <laughs> what are you asking so many questions for, huh? It's my life, and all I want to do is have some fun. Big whoop. <laughs> Bruce, dude. Oh, man. Um, what, did I ever like songs that were by like female artists when I was a little kid? Because now that I'm thinking about it, all the CDs that I bought when I was a kid were like Warren G, um, The Prodigy, um, 
something else that ends with G? No. Uh, I guess I used to get like some of the 100% hits albums that would have like some pop music and stuff on there, but I like pop music. And like I say, that Sheryl Crow song is a banger. It, it's funny, um, I was listening to this radio station and <laughs> I don't know how, I just kind of got onto this station. I usually channel flip and only am in the car for like 10 minutes in the mornings, like when I'm driving to work. And I somehow ended up on this one station for a while and I noticed just weird stuff about it. Like just, there was something that felt kind of off about the whole thing and my missus told me that it's like a ladies radio station. Like not a ladies radio station, but it's kind of a girls radio station. And I immediately thought back to earlier that day where there was a commercial that was like, if you want to change your oil yourself, you can learn how. And it was like a whole thing about learning how to change your oil. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even pick up on it at the time. There was like stories about like, uh, I, I never heard these, but they would advertise it like later on this morning, we're going to have this couple that, you know, going through fertility processes together. And I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't have to listen to that. But as a result, I now frequently hear uh, Shania Twain, um, Cheryl Crow, <laughs> Alanis Morissette. That's a part of my regular music intake in the very brief uh, journey from home to the train station and back again in the afternoon. But I hope you enjoyed this one here. Let me know what your favorite Christmas present was. If you want to tell me your worst as well, sure, but I'm sure people probably remember like their favorite Christmas presents a lot more. Mine was, it probably had to be that Super Nintendo. Oh, actually, I don't know if this was the same year. It must have been a different year because uh, I was never that spoiled, but I got the Jurassic Park Jeep. And I had all the Jurassic, but that was the other figure collection I had all of, the Jurassic Park toys and I think my auntie had to like beat the hell out of some woman at a department store to get me Robert Muldoon because he was super rare because his uh, grenade launcher would shoot kids in the eyes and I think they had to recall it and remove some parts from the packaging so he was very hard to get and thanks to my auntie Anne she uh yeah went full-blown like barbarian <laughs> protective lioness and uh, got me that action figure when I was a kid. I hope you enjoyed that little story and as always everyone be well, stay safe, look after your friends, see you in the next video. Peace!